uh, probably I, I'm I'm guessing that we'll we'll easily do two chapters today today and then maybe two chapters next week. Would that be okay? Yeah. Or we could go full stop and and try to do four in fifty minutes. It's up to you. Well, this, it's just go, go go for it. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll try to finish it. Um, I didn't have as quite as many notes as I have on previous weeks, but we'll just see. I'll try to do it so that we have ten minutes in each, ten to twelve minutes in each chapter. Chapter eight on page one ninety five is Christianity hard or easy. <laughs> yeah, Janet just gave kind of the yeah. answer. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I I liked I I liked his point that that um if we try any other way to live our lives it's much harder, right? Uh, but it's not easy, of course. Um walking by faith with Jesus. And um but it is far easier than trying to do it on our own, right? And in in independent of of God. <laughs> Is there anything that spoke to you in this chapter? I, I have some notes, but I don't want to dominate. <clears throat> I liked his statement on page 199 uh, kind of in the bottom middle the church exists for nothing else but to draw people into Christ to make them little Christs. Then further down, it says, it says in the Bible that the whole universe was made for Christ and that everything is to be gathered together in him. Um, and what is our mission statement at St. Luke? Mm -hmm. To know Christ and make him known, right? By the way, there's a there's a there's a celebrity of sorts. Um, uh, gosh, now I, his name is escaping me. Um, but he just was baptized last week, and um, he's a British celebrity, um, uh, Russell Strand. Have you heard of him? He's a comedian. Mm -hmm. Russell Brand, excuse me, B R A N D. Russell. Oh, Brand. Yeah, I think I have. Yeah, and he he was just baptized last week, so he's just became a Christian, so he's a newbie. And I watched about a fifteen minute video of him talking about his faith. And guess what book he held up at the end? <laughs> he held up this, really? and it was this book. You know, it's really, really? Like the same color and everything. I was like, oh my gosh, he's he's reading our book. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. um but now he was talking about how he has a personal relationship with jesus and um and i think that um yeah that's what it's all about so it's not about being doctrinally correct um i don't know what denomination he was baptized in um and really ultimately if we're kind of following his train of thought here ultimately that's not what matters right not that it doesn't matter, <laughs> but, um, but that what's really important is that people are drawn into Jesus Christ. So, I think at the bottom of page 198, mm -hmm. where it says, when he said, be perfect, 
-hmm. He meant it. Mm -hmm. He meant that we must go in for the full treatment. Yeah. It's hard. But the sort of compromise we're all hankering after is harder. In fact, it's <laughs> impossible. Yeah. It may be hard for an egg to turn into a bird. It would be a jolly sight harder for it to learn to fly <laughs> while remaining an egg. Yeah. <laughs> we are like eggs at present. Mm. Not go on indefinitely being just an ordinary decent egg. You have, we must be hatched or go bad. <laughs> and I I thought to myself, that's a good ex explanation mm -hmm. because yes, he wants all of us. He doesn't yeah. want little bits. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want us to give up our really bad habits, but maintain our supposed good habits, which when we're prideful about them are worse than the bad habits yeah yeah yeah. Mm. yeah it's it's kind of maintaining that um truth that was so important to martin luther and we lutherans that we can't do it we just we can't do it we we, we are at the mercy and grace of god and he is happy he is ready and lovingly inclined to help us. <laughs> mm -hmm. Forgive them for they know not what they do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I say, is it easy or is it hard? Uh, mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it, Hard or easy, it, it's easy when you uh, just read the uh, the great commandment. Yeah, uh, that's you know straight simple. Hey, that can't be bad. Yeah, right. <laughs> and then try use and try don't. and do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's yeah. Marching orders are uh, uh, you know easy, if you will, but yeah, yeah. Accomplishment, and then. You know, it keeping that in mind, you know, then for every situation and what comes to mind is you say, Well, what would Jesus do? You know, to try mm -hmm. to keep you on the right track between yeah. the great commandment and that question, what would Jesus do? Mm -hmm. I think we can muddle through fairly well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know. But it's not we who are pushing how well we do, Fred. Yeah. It's the spirit. So, yeah. you know, the minute that we think we have a part of this, I think that's what he's trying to point out here. Mm -hmm. That all of it is driven by God, mm -hmm. yeah. not by us. Mm -hmm. God intends us to be perfect, and he points us in the right direction. Mm -hmm. The beginning of the paragraph I mentioned, it says we can only do this for a few moments at first. Mm -hmm. You have to give up your perception of what you should be. Do you know what I mean? No matter what it is, whether you want to be the world's greatest villain or the world's greatest saint, mm -hmm. you have to give that up. Mm -hmm. Your impression of it. Mm -hmm. For God. I cannot by my own reason or strength come to him, right? As, as the catechism words. says. Um. I, I love the way it ends in page 200. The prince of the universe wants to offer to his father that present which is himself and therefore us in him. It's the only thing we were made for. And there are strange, exciting hints in the Bible that when we are drawn in, a great many other things in nature will begin to come right. The bad dream will be over. It will be morning. Yes. 
so you have that you have that kind of a scripture reference here to Romans, right? That the whole creation groans for redemption, right? And then in book in the book of Revelation, you have a new heaven and a new earth, right? And you have the church triumphant. <laughs> so should we go to chapter nine? Mm -hmm. We're making good time. Um, counting the cost. <clears throat> um, I loved the the illustration on pages 202 and 3, so it's right at the bottom of page 202, about uh, quoting George MacDonald. Every father is pleased, every parent, right, is pleased at the baby's first attempt to walk. No parent would be satisfied with anything less than a firm, free, adult walk in a grown-up child. In the same way, he said, God is easy to please, but hard to satisfy. I kind of made this gender neutral because I didn't want it. It sounded a little bit of, <laughs> you know, we don't want to just, it doesn't apply just to masculinity, right? Well, he does that throughout the book. Yeah, yeah. Which was the grammatical way yeah. of Expressing yourself. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Those of us in this particular age group. Yeah. <laughs> we have no problem with that. I know, I don't either. But when you hear, when people hear manly, they, just, the they think maybe of, you know, a football mm -hmm. player instead of, you know. Well, the point is that even those of us who are female yeah. grew up with that. We didn't particularly take notice of it yeah so some of the gals who had a difficulty with it began to say you know this isn't fair mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then that began to get into our heads which is mm -hmm. a totally different thing mm -hmm. also driven by people rather than god so getting back to the quote i think that what what he's saying george mcdonald is saying is that just as we as parents want our children to grow, grow and grow <laughs> and continue to grow into the people of God that, you know, he wants them to be. Um, so God wants us to also in our faith to grow. And, but he's also pleased. He's always pleased with us. So it's not like he's displeased, but he's not satisfied, you know, with and We never arrive in this life. Um, I think the end of the second paragraph is the more important one. Hmm. I think many of us, when Christ has enabled us to overcome one or two sins that were an obvious nuisance, are inclined to feel, though we don't put it into words, that we are now good enough. <laughs> he has done all we wanted him to do, and we should be obliged if he would now leave us alone. <laughs> As we say, I never expected to be a saint. Mm -hmm. I only wanted to be a decent, ordinary chap. Mm -hmm. Imagine when we say this, that we are being humble. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that, you know, going back to my paragraph, when people say the Lord, when he said, the Lord wants you to be perfect. Yeah. People said, well, people can't be perfect. And therefore it's hopeless. He points out, I think he meant the only help I will give you is help to become perfect. 
you may want something less, but I will give you nothing less. Yeah, yeah. And that's that's the difference. The the declaration by God that this is what you need. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who's got the bird? Mm -hmm. the, uh, the other quote I like is another George MacDonald. It's a parable. And I'll just describe it briefly rather than read the whole thing. But he basically talks about how um, when God comes into our house, right? When, when we become a Christian. Um, That's the bird he was talking about. He starts to do. He's hearing that bird. <laughs> He starts to do uh, uh, renovations and starts to clean up and kind of goes beyond our expectations, right, of a, of a guest. And, and I think that's true. I, and I think, you know, that ultimately he's building a palace, um, George MacDonald says. And, and that's really true to scripture, right, that, that we are temples of the Holy Spirit. And... Uh, and there is and, kind of a, a cleansing of the temple, so to speak, <laughs> like Jesus did in Holy Week. In and Jesus lives. went to make a room for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which my mother is now cleaning. He uh, kind of pushes the envelope a little bit, I think, although I think he's right on page 206 at the top when he says that that ultimately God makes the feeblest and filthiest of us into God, a god or a goddess. And, of course, it's lowercase g. Mm -hmm. um, and But you have that in Scripture, right, that we are sons of God. And um, not to say that we are in any way <laughs> gods <laughs> capital g or deities no but that that we are actually elevated and we our inheritance is christ's inheritance so we are like little like luther would say we're like little christs right <clears throat> but the light is reflective it's not the light isn't coming from us it's reflecting from christ right <laughs> anything else about this chapter because we can we could probably continue pressing on because also we will we'll want to decide what we want to do next week, right? So, so chapter 10, nice people or new people? <laughs> uh, That's the same as the hard or easy question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's kind of dealing with the question on page 207 is why aren't Christians nicer, you know, why aren't, mm. they, all, why aren't they all good people? And that's a, an objection, right. That people might have to Christianity. Um, but you could say that about really any group of people, right. You could say that about atheists. Mm -hmm. uh, you could say that about Republicans, Democrats. <laughs> uh, you can put it it's a continuum. Yeah. You know, there are people at both ends of the spectrum on each of the lines. There are nice Christians. There are certainly, mm -hmm. I have known over the years, 
them not very nice Christians whose, yeah. you know, opinions about everything are sort of always dire. Yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, the, yeah. <laughs> sulfur and brimstone types of sermons yeah. to scare people into believing in Christ rather than the invitation. Mm -hmm. I think you also have to take it in the context of when he was writing this. Mm -hmm. There were Nazis who were Christian mm -hmm. um, and they didn't act very nicely. No. Exactly. So I think he has he strikes a good balance between the necessity of good works, right, and that Christians should be um, happier, more loving people. Um, but on this side of the veil, right, it's, we're all struggling, right? Um, uh, I think too many people, though, take the good works as a, a burden, something that they would do um to try to make them feel right with god mm -hmm. when actually it's a product of their faith that instigates is the catalyst for good works mm -hmm. not the other way around mm -hmm. right the tree is known by its fruit right as jesus says yeah and people just like to throw the fruit yeah and say, see what I've done? Mm -hmm. And it's an unrealistic expectation that that mere mortals who believe in Jesus um, are going to change quickly enough and sufficiently enough to really all change and quickly enough and sufficiently enough to, to be that distinctive. And yet, I think... I think that Christians are that dis that distinctive. I think that I think the more the culture drifts away from kindness and and love, I think the more we will stand out. You know, during I mean during World War II, people like Corrie Ten Boom, who was hiding Jews from the Nazis, her Christian faith really stood out. <laughs> um, and I think there were, you know, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, also he, his his faith really stood out in contrast to, so I think, you know, it does give us a chance, the, the darkness does give us a chance to shine more, or it should. <clears throat> We're all a work in progress. <laughs> yes. And one of the things he points out since <clears throat> day in this life is essentially such a short one, mm -hmm. we consider the 2,000 years since Christ as being just a flash in the eternal universe. Yeah, uh, yeah. That 2,000 years has created amazing things here. But it doesn't surprise me that he points out that even after death, we will still be being improved by God. Yeah, yeah. That this is his choice mm -hmm. because he wants us mm -hmm. to be. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Little Christ. Yeah.
he gets back to the point on page 214 that we cannot do it on our own, right? Um, and that really it's Christ or nothing. That ultimately trying to do good works, trying to become a better person will lead to arrogance or despair, right? We'll either become proud or we'll become depressed. <laughs> yes. Um, and really when we're proud, we're just fooling ourselves, right? And so when we when we're in despair, <clears throat> I, we're realizing our limitations, and if that should bring us to to Jesus, you know, for help. Exactly. I think the first paragraph on page two fifteen, mm. where it talks about you know, there's warning or encouragement here for every one of us. If virtue comes easily to you, beware. Much is expected from those to whom much is given. Mm -hmm. If you mistake your own merits, what are really God's gifts to you through nature, and if you are contented with simply being nice, you are still a rebel, and all those gifts will only make your fall more terrible, mm -hmm. your corruption more complicated. Yeah. Your bad example, more disastrous. The devil was an archangel once. His natural gifts were as far above yours as yours are above those of a chimpanzee. Mm. Okay. <laughs> but I think he's absolutely right that um, the minute we want to take the, the um, I was going to say blame for what we are. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> God certainly does not like that. It's, he is trying to turn us into perfect people. Yeah. The very end of the of the chapter page 217 um you cannot put him off with speculations about your next door neighbors or memories of what you have read in books what will all that chatter and hearsay count will you even be able to remember it when the anesthetic fog which we call nature or the real world fades away and the presence in which you have always stood becomes palpable, immediate, and unavoidable. I think this is a really powerful idea because what he says, that the presence in which you have always stood is, becomes palpable, immediate, and unavoidable. In other words, um, it's, it's reminding us of what Jesus' first words were in his ministry, the kingdom of God is near, right? Uh, and... Um, really, we're just unaware of Christ's presence <laughs> for a lot of our lives or a lot of our time. And uh, and so I think what he's encouraging us to do is, is to become aware of Christ's presence now and uh, so that when that veil is lifted, right, when that, that anesthetic, it's hard, that's a hard word to say. Anesthetic. <laughs> anesthetic. <laughs> fog um is lifted um that we that we um will be standing and we'll see jesus face to face like scripture scripture reminds us and uh, uh, and that will ultimately bring an additional transformation we'll become like him recently my orthodox first cousin once removed um, posted a picture of um, some textbooks of the 
I guess what they would call the Holy Fathers in the Orthodox tradition. Mm -hmm. And he asked what was missing. And I said, the Bible. I mean, all of those texts were just human opinion. Mm -hmm. But what really counted what was missing was the scriptures that they're supposed to be based on. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, when he says when the veil is lifted from memories of those books, people are going to be really disappointed if they were only looking at those church fathers instead of looking at the scriptures themselves. Yeah, yeah. Should we go on to chapter 11? It's the last chapter of the book. The new people. The new people, yes. And again, he talks about transformation again um, is the ultimate goal. Um, I forget who said this, but, you know, God's goal is not to make us smarter sinners, <laughs> but ho holy people, right, to, to transform us. Um, so it's not all about, you know, knowing theology and, and all of that stuff. It's, it's about the change. And I think what God wants for us is not to become Bible scholars, but, but to allow scripture, right, to transform us or to allow him to, we don't really allow him, but, but we invite him. We, we can be receptive to his work. Talks about us becoming transformed from creatures of God to, to sons and daughters of God, which we've already talked about. Um, Pastor? Yeah. Uh, you were mentioning about uh, the Bible. Yeah. I, you know, he, he doesn't quote that often uh, yeah. anything, you know, in the Bible. And that's something that uh, d disturbs me a little bit because uh, uh, yeah. I, I don't know, maybe I'm seeing it the wrong way, but uh, uh, he's got a lot of good things to say, but, yeah. uh, and I'm sure they referred to the Bible, but uh, um, I don't know. It seems well, some, sometimes, he, like, like in the last chapter, he said that what to whom much has been given much is required that is scripture but he didn't yeah. he didn't reference it so there's a okay. lot of stuff like that yeah and remember his audience was they they were skeptical about the bible they were skeptical okay. about christianity and so i think he was kind of slipping scripture in in a way okay yeah, yeah. but I, I i and that's why i think i mean my, my preference is always just to study the Bible directly too, but um, but I think the way C.S. Lewis talks about scriptural truth is very winsome, right? I think he's mm -hmm. he's trying to win people in, so it's it's kind of an evangelistic book, you know. Mm -hmm. Yes, sorts. and it's compelling to the atheist or agnostic because it's not quoting the Bible, yeah, all the time. Yeah. Sometimes non-Christians feel like we're doing this, beating their heads over. <laughs> <laughs> so mm -hmm. he's he's kind of uh you know, when he talks about like that we'll be transformed, I mean that's all derived from scripture, you know. Um, that's what I was saying to you that he's goes yeah. around it. Yeah. Um, I I highlighted a couple of things in this chapter because they spoke specifically to me in the middle of page 223. Uh, <laughs> it says, we must get over wanting to be needed. Mm -hmm. In some goodish people, especially women, that's the hardest of all temptations to resist. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, uh oh. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, the idea that um, 
they need to have you around because you're the one that takes care of them or mm. whatever it is. Yeah. But we women fall into, I think, more often. Mm. To become new people means losing what we now call ourselves. Yeah, yeah. Out of ourselves into Christ, we must go. Mm. And that resonated. Yeah. And on page 225 in the beginning of the second paragraph, mm -hmm. it's something like that with Christ and us. The more we get what we call now call ourselves out of the way and let him take us over, the more truly yeah. ourselves we become. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. That, you know, yeah. these paradoxes, yeah. these to me are the mysteries mm -hmm. I always talk about. Yeah. You know? I, um, I felt, yeah, I, I felt that was so compelling. And in, especially the, that, like the, the light, when you're in a dark room, the light, you would think that when the light illuminates people that they're going to all look the same because it's the same light, right? And he says, no, when the light hits us, it actually brings out our uniqueness. I thought that was a beautiful, powerful yeah. illustration. Mm -hmm. um, I, think, I think what we're really afraid of losing is our ego, right? Our false self. Mm -hmm. And we do that. We and then of course the Apostle Paul, you know, John getting at it some scripture, he talks a lot about that, you know, putting aside the the, the old self, right? The old man. The old Adam. The old Adam, right? And putting on the new Adam, the new, the new man, new person, Jesus. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you you would think that that's that is that's a that's gonna annihilate our uniqueness, but in fact it doesn't. It it actually highlights it. And so mm -hmm. we're more well, yeah. interesting. He talks until you're given up yourself to him, you will not have a real self. Mm -hmm. Sameness is to be found most among the most natural in quotations men, mm -hmm. not among those who surrender to Christ. Mm -hmm. Monotonously alike, all the great tyrants and conquerors mm -hmm. have been. How gloriously yeah. different are the saints. Yes, yes. And that resonated, I thought. Me too, well. me too. Yeah. yeah. Um, all of the, the saints and the various things that they espoused and how they worked for yeah. Christ in the people that they were ministering to. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> And how the uh, totalitarian and uh, just crazy leaders. Yeah, I know. I know. It's like and power brokers and so yeah, forth. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's like a virus. Yes. Mm -hmm. World Worldwide global pandemic of narcissism. <laughs> Ego out of control. <laughs> yes. And uh, yeah. <clears throat> I I I was thinking too of John the Baptist when they when the when people confronted him, who are you? Right? Are you Elijah? Are you the Christ? Et cetera, et cetera. It says, um, the one coming after me, right? He points to Jesus, and then he says, He must increase, I must decrease, right? And, and I think that becomes the mark, I think, of a of a true Christian leader, you know, is that that we're not about ourselves. I'm not I'm just talking about not just pastors and leaders. I'm talking about all of us people <laughs> that that it's it ultimately we want to give glory to God. We want to increase. We hallowed be thy name, right? That's our prayer. Not my name. And reputation. Um, he talks about giving up the self on page 226. 
um, the last few pages. Um, and um, talks about that you'll, on the bottom of page 226 that you will never make a good impression on other people until you stop thinking about what sort of impression you are making. And I think that that's, it, that's where your heart is, right? And you can, Really, we have little control over that, but that's what we need to work on is where our hearts are. And um, and then he ends the last, John, I would contend that the last sentence is a paraphrase of Ma Matthew 6, 33, right? Seek first his kingdom and all his righteousness and all these things will be added to you, right? Mm -hmm. Look for Christ and you will find him and with him, everything else thrown in, <laughs> Mm -hmm. I know. Yeah, Tom Lamandola, our deacon, uh, has a he has Matthew six thirty three on his wristband, uh, on his uh, bracelet, and it, I I think it's I think it's a powerful scripture, a good one to end on. That really it's. We, we are to keep back nothing, hold back nothing in our pursuit of, of, of God in Christ. Do you guys have any concluding thoughts about this as we, we got three minutes before I have to go? Any book of the Bible that, that you, that you two would like to study next? Is there revelation? <laughs> revelation. <laughs> I'm all for that. Uh, if we do that, I would probably break it down to manageable parts so that we're not in it for the next year and a half. <laughs> <laughs> you know, maybe do several chapters at a time and then maybe highlight the parts of the chapters that were meaningful to us, something like that. Would that be okay? Okay, I got a thumbs up from John. You got a thumbs up? Yeah. We'll put your thumb up. <laughs> Why don't we start with Revelation chapter one, and then we'll we'll have a kind of an introduction of sorts that I'll do, um, and uh, but let's 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 talk about um, think about John as a writer, think about who he is, and also because um, you know he's the author of the Gospel of John and then the three epistles of John, and then also think about apocalyptic literature what it, you know what it's very similar to the book of daniel in fact revelation quotes the book of daniel uh frequently so just uh, keep that in mind for the introduction because our approach to that is very important because it's probably the most misinterpreted if in fact i would say that the more certain you are in your interpretation probably the more likely you are wrong <laughs> uh, yeah it's a humbling book to, to try to understand but i think profitable for sure so all right great is that a good place to end or was there anything else that anybody wanted to say did you enjoy your christianity yes yeah Good. So I'm glad that we did it too. I think it really helps us um, kind of frame our Christian life together and um, our faith. All right. Well, let's let's end it with prayer. Gracious God, we do thank you for this day. We thank you for our study of this book and pray that we continue to enrich our lives as it points us to you. And uh, be with us this week and uh, protect us and keep us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It's good to see everyone. Yes. Okay. Bye. Look forward to next week. Bye now. Bye-bye.